You know, it's fun playing video games. I play a lot of video games. I play a lot of PC. I play some Xbox. I only play PlayStation to play Gran Turismo. But I'm going to be playing a lot more of the Xbox for work. A lot of the PC for work. Because EA Sports is College Football 25 comes out July 19th. And I can tell everybody that I'm at work when I'm playing this game because that's what it is. All right. So knowing all of that, we thought it'd be fun if I predicted who the top five rated players would be in CFB 25. Now, we're going to start with lower ratings, but none of these guys were rated lowly. And we're going to go from there. I'm going to give you some reasons as to why. Okay. So number five, I got Georgia quarterback Carson Beck. Uh, I got Carson Beck at 97 here. Completed 72% of his passes last year for 3,900 plus yards, 24 pass TDs, six picks. The thing that would scare me about giving Carson Beck a 97 rating or even higher rating than that is Brock Bowers ain't there no more. And I know people be like, yeah, the, uh, they had other receivers. Yeah, but he had 56 catches for 714 yards, and that was a down year. He also had six of those 24 TDs. And Brock Bowers commands a lot of people's attention, right? I mean, not for nothing, but Mike Bobo did a great job of getting that dude to rock, either on end rounds, sweeps, whatever it might have been. And then Carson Beck did a good enough job operating the offense. What's funny about this is Carson Beck is a better quarterback than Stetson Bennett, but Stetson Bennett won two national championships. So I I, I just don't – I don't understand, right? What, what else are we going to say about Carson Beck until he wins a national championship? And you don't win no national championship by losing Alabama in the SEC championship. That's just not going to be what it is, right? So 97 I think is generous. I could see it being lower. I could, but I think 97 is about where it's going to land. Next on the list, I got Texas quarterback Quinn Ewers who I also have with a 97 rating. Uh, 3,400 pass yards, about 3,500, 22 pass TDs, six INTs. Super talented dude. We know about the arm talent. We know about the accuracy. What we don't know about is health and injury. And frankly, that's going to be a big thing that we're all watching when we play this game is how does the game adjust for what are real-life health injury risk versus not? Because Quinn Ewers has not completed an entire season of college football without missing a game due to injury. You have to take that into account. Now, when he is on the field, he gives them every opportunity to win, and you show that, right? They over to uh, go to Tuscaloosa and beat Alabama. They won their first Big 12 championship in over a decade. They made the college football playoff for the first time because he was the quarterback. He's going to have dudes out there that can help him. Amari Nyblack comes to mind. Jonte Cook comes to mind. C.J. Baxter in the backfield. They're going to have tools to do this, and it would not shock anybody to see him as a first-round draft pick or even an early favorite to win the Heisman Trophy. Okay, number three on the list. Now we go going up a rate. I got... Oklahoma State running back Ollie Gordon at a 98 here. What's cool about Ollie is that he was playing he's playing quarterback in high school, but that's just what Mike Gundy and his staff were able to do. They find these dudes that go for a billion yards at small schools and bring them to Oklahoma State, and they turn out to be bona fide studs. Ollie Gordon, the best tailback come out of Oklahoma State since Chuba Hubbard, who was a 2,000-yard rusher, right, who was an All-American. And they got a long history of great tailbacks. At Oklahoma State, I say long, it's going back to Barry Sanders, Thurman Thomas, but you get my point there, right? Add to this, he ran the ball a bunch. I mean, he was a workhorse, unlike we have seen in the modern era of college football where people want to really limit the running back's carries to keep that dude healthier longer. But he had 285 rushes for 1,732 yards, and then he added 39 catches for 330 yards, and he had what? What is this? Thir yes, my God, he had 21 rush TDs. I think as long as he doesn't run out of gas, right? He's going to be there in the Heisman conversation as long as Oklahoma State's winning the football, winning football game. Now, that said, it took Mike Gundy three games to figure out that he should be putting the ball into the belly of his best player. But he figured it out. And when he figured it out, good things were happening right up until they got beat down by Texas in the Big 12 championship. Now, again, I want to see how the wear and tear is going to affect gameplay when you go with Oklahoma State. But I'm sure that Ollie Gordon going to be one of them team or gonna, is going to be the team. For whomever picks Oklahoma State, like you're not going to pick Oklahoma State, no shade, because Alan Bowman is quarterback. You're going to pick Oklahoma State because Ollie Gordon is the tailback, right? Say nothing of some other dudes that I really enjoy over there. But last, uh, excuse me, fourth guy on the list here, not the last guy on the list, Colorado defensive back, wide receiver, do everything. Travis Hunter, I got him at, uh, well, I had him at a 98. So. I'm going to stick with a 98 here, even though we see 97 here, and that's what I wrote down, so that's on me. But I have him a 98. I had him a 98 because 57 catch, 721 yards. And then, look at that. Producers are quick, dude. Like, this, that was cool. She did that a lot. My God. All right, so 57 catch, 721 yards. And then, 
five TDs, right? All right, that's one thing. I love this play because, well, frankly, Travis Hunter had no business making this play, but he made those sorts of plays all last year because Shadour Sanders was running for his life. Shadour Sanders got sacked more than 50 times in 11 games of football. That said, Travis Hunter also played both ways, so that dude was taking wear and tear too. He had 30 tackles, two tackles for loss, three picks, five pass breakups, and gave up 294 receiving yards to Alec Ayamanner. That is probably the reason I was waffling about 98 versus 97, because that is a that is a plot point. That is a fact I cannot get out of my skull. I think Travis Hunter could be the best player in college football. I also think that Alec Ironmanner probably looks at this and says, well, if he's a 98, I'm a 99, because I gave that dude the what for and how now in a comeback for Stanford. I get that Stanford has been good here of late. I get they got Andrew Luck, David Shaw, Jim Harbaugh, uh, Christian McCaffrey, right? We can keep going down the list, right? Uh, but there's not a world in which Stanford is supposed to have a wide receiver who is torching a five-star defensive back, an all-world Paul Hornig Award winner for 294 yards and 13 catches. I realize that every, there's like the three, four, five other dudes that play the secondary, but I'm looking at 12. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to come back from that this year. That's pro. Yeah. That's the reason. That's got to be the reason why I was going to, uh, I don't know about that. Cause I wouldn't let that go. If I was Elegant Iron Man, that would be the first thing in my resume. I wouldn't tell nobody nothing else. I got 13 for 294 in a win against Travis Hunter and Colorado. Draft me as the number one overall pick. Give me the Heisman Trophy right now. All the love y'all be showing that man, and he'd have a point. Okay, now the last guy on the list for me, and he is a 98. Billy Bowman at Oklahoma, a.k.a. Oski, because good God, man. I was standing on the table for this dude to win the Jordan Thorpe Award. I don't, I don't mind saying it. 63 tackles, six picks, three returns for touchdown, one 100-yard 100 return for touchdown against Brigham Young, and my favorite gave J.T. Sanders the knick-knack patty whack, gave that dude a mad crack to help win the Red River rivalry. Needed to win that one. And Billy showed up, dog. Like, it was one of those where I needed to to remember that at one point, people were afraid of Brandon Everett playing safety at Oklahoma. That playing a defense back Position at Oklahoma used to mean not just picks, but you was laying the wood. And Billy Bowman is the kind of dude that I'm glad that Brent Venables has decided to make that dude into some version of Isaiah Simmons, if shorter. But he could be Christian McCaffrey like that dude could play in the slot. He could play tailback. And you know what? In high school, that's what it looked like he was going to do. He might have gone both ways like he would be a candidate to do the Travis Hunter thing. But Brent Venables is smart. Let me make this dude the best safety that we could possibly make him, and then we'll see. And then we'll see. And you know what? That's working out just fine. I'm probably going to be standing on the table for Oski if he plays the way this year that he did last year. Because, uh, again, 63 tackles, six picks, three return for touchdowns. Why is he getting a 98? Because Malcolm Jenkins won the Thorpe Award in 2008 with 57 tackles and three picks at Ohio State. Also won the Thorpe Award since we're here. I used to play NCAA 09. And I had a homie who would always pick Ohio State because he that tight. But I couldn't throw the ball over there anywhere near Malcolm Jenkins, even though I knew he had Malcolm Jenkins and man coverage and he let the CPU play the defense because the CPU would be cheating. And if Billy Bowman is the kind of player that I think he is and his stats would show and his play would show, he is the kind of player that's going to be cheating on that game just uh, too in in oh, excuse me, NCAA, in EA Sports' college football 25. Okay? Now, real quick before we get out of here, uh, why no Donovan Edwards? I don't know how much of y'all watch Donovan Edwards. I know he's on the cover. I know he's on the jewel box, you know, with, with Travis Hunter and Quinn Ewers. But he, 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 he didn't do much last year. He didn't do much. Matter of fact, if not for the national championship game where he had six catches for uh, – six, six carries for 104 yards, two TDs – we might, might not be talking about Donovan Edwards at all. I'm, I'm being serious. He had 491 yards rushing last year. Okay? Excuse me, 497. I don't want to short him at six yards. That's 4.2 yards per rush because he rushed the ball 
what is this? Uh, 100, yeah, 119 times. In 2022, he ran the ball 140 times, but he also had 991 on the ground. So he wasn't nearly as effective with just a handful fewer carries, basically the same amount, right? That was basically the Blake Corum show, but that's been the Blake Corum show for the last two years. I want to see if Donovan Edwards can do what Blake Corum was able to do the last two years this year. Otherwise, we might be here talking about not just Joey Harrington, but Donovan Edwards be on the cover of EA Sports' College Football 2025 come 2025. If you like what you've seen, consider subscribing to the number one college football show on YouTube, the Fox Sports app, or wherever you get your podcast.